In this video, I'm going to be repairing this vintage Toshiba T2200SX laptop computer. Now, I got this machine for free quite some time ago, actually. I think it's been uh, about a year since I've gotten this machine. And it actually works perfectly fine. However, the LCD display uh, is what's uh, having problems in this machine. Now, basically what would happen was uh, when you turn it on, uh, the display comes on. Uh, but the contrast is very, very poor, and you can hardly even see anything on the screen at all. And most of the time, it doesn't even show an image. Uh, so basically, what the issue is with this are bad capacitors on the LCD panel. So uh, let me go ahead and open it up here. So as you can see, I have already removed the LCD panel, and it's actually right here. And uh, the issue are these capacitors right here. So you can kind of see that they look like they've been leaking a little bit there. And uh, there's some more uh, over here. Uh, so yeah, in this video I'm just going to take all these capacitors off and uh, replace them with, of course, brand new capacitors. And uh, in theory, that should get this machine fully working. Now, back when I did have it, uh, the display assembly on, uh, the machine did work. Uh, it turned on, the hard drive works fine, uh, and it has a copy of Windows 3.1 on it, I believe. Uh, but like I said, the display doesn't work. Um, so as you can see, the machine is in extremely good condition. Uh, there's hardly even a scratch on it, in fact. Uh, so yeah, this is definitely worth repairing. And uh, as you can see, it also does not have a built-in mouse. Uh, this actually came with this little uh, clip-on trackball that goes over here. And it plugs into uh, the PS2 mouse port right there. So it is quite an interesting machine, and uh, I will show you that uh, once we get the machine put back together after repairing it. Uh, but for right now, I'm going to go ahead and put this display assembly up on my repair table, and uh, we will begin desoldering the original capacitors. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and I'll be right back. Alright, so as you can see, I've gotten the display assembly up on my table here, and uh, we are now ready to begin desoldering the original capacitors. Now. I am going to take out all of these capacitors except for this one, and the reason for that is because all of these are the same value except for this one, so I'm going to leave this one in here uh, just so I remember uh, which spot uh, needed the capacitor of a different value, uh, but the rest of these are 6.8 volt, or I mean 6.8 microfarad, uh, 35 volt, and this one is 47 microfarad, 6.3 volt. So. Um, we'll go ahead and begin the process of desoldering them now. Not sure how difficult this is going to be. Uh, the uh, leaked capacitor residue will make this a little bit more difficult. Uh, but I guess I'll go ahead and start by just applying some flux to it. Just like that. And I'll probably just take some solder here and put some new solder on, and that should hopefully loosen it up a little bit. So go ahead and... Alright, and now I'll try to uh, take some solder wick and see if I can't... Uh, remove the solder just uh, from right there. So, get some out here. And it seems to actually be working pretty darn well. Especially with this being lead free, or uh, yeah, leaded solder, uh, that makes it a lot easier to work with. Probably take my tweezers here and just kind of pull up on the capacitor as I desolder it. Just like so. I got one leg off there. And being a little bit more difficult. Uh, 
Ah, and there we go. Came right off. So there's one capacitor off. And uh, I'll probably just repeat the same process uh, for the rest of them, except for that one, of course. Um, so let me start by applying a little bit of flux to that. And honestly, I probably don't even need to use the solder work. I can probably just add a little bit of solder and uh, then just pull them right off using the tweezers. Alright, so that one's loosened up. And there we go. Got that one off as well. Okay. There we go. Um, and now we'll do the same with uh, these two right here. So, let me apply some flux first. Alright, that one came off. Good. Yeah, I tried not to hit the LCD there, but unfortunately I nicked it a little bit with the soldering iron. No big deal though. Alright, good. see all the capacitor goo that's in this area. Alright, so now we'll go ahead and move on to these down here. Alright, so now that I've gotten all those caps off, um, we're going to go ahead and uh, clean off all the pads here. Uh, so to do that, I'm just going to kind of take some new solder and just put it on each pad. Just like this. I'll just clean all this nasty capacitor residue out of here. Alright, so I'm probably just going to finish cleaning up all those pads and then I'll go ahead and resume the video. Alright, so as you can see I've gone ahead and just uh, removed all the capacitors. I removed this one just because I remember where it is and I'll be able to uh, put the correct capacitor back there and as you can see I've removed all the solder using my solder wick and cleaned the entire board uh, using some q-tips and rubbing alcohol so as you can see the board now looks really really clean and we are now ready to begin soldering on the new capacitors so I'm gonna go ahead and get those out and we'll begin the process of soldering them on 
All right, so as you can see here, uh, I have gotten the new capacitors right here. And uh, I got more than I actually needed just in case, you know, I needed some extras for whatever reason. Uh, but I matched the size up to the size of the original capacitors. So basically what we can do here is just take one out and uh, then just bend the leads how the original capacitor was. And then uh, we should be able to just bend the capacitors around a little bit so they kind of sit right where they're supposed to on the pads and then just solder them on. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, bend these using a pair of tweezers here. So I think if we just bend the leads down like this, actually let me get the flat tweezers and, and bend them like that. Sort of like that, so they sit kind of like this. And I am ensuring that the polarity is correct. The negative is on this side, the positive is on this side, as you can see. Uh, there's a little bit of an indication there. Um, so then if I bend them out, just a little, just kind of like that, I think should work. And if I can just solder them to the pads like this, um, I'd prefer that to be a little bit straighter here. Let me go ahead and cut the leads off, see if that makes it any easier. Alright, so I think if I just solder them on just like this, uh, actually they need to be... Because one of them's got to go like that. Yeah, so I got to make sure it's like right up on there. So I'm going to get another one out since I kind of messed up on that one. And uh, then we'll go ahead and bend it properly here. All right, so that one came out a little bit easier. So for this one, I'm going to start by just bending the leads outwards like this. and then kind of bend them around and down. Just like that. There we go, that should work just fine. Good. So then I'll just solder those leads in like that and uh, the capacitor will just sit right down there. So let me go ahead and do that now. solder on the end of my iron here, line the capacitor, and then just solder it in like so. Alright, and that looks about good, so now I'll just go ahead and cut the excess leads off of here. And there we go, that looks pretty good. Um, so now I'll go ahead and I guess I'll get uh, this one right here. Uh, so the negative is correct on there, which is good. Um, so now I'll go ahead and grab another one out here. and bend it in pretty much the same way as I bent that one. And this one I'll have to cut the excess leads off before I put it on. Do that.
And there we go, that's perfect. So let me grab it with my tweezers here. And the negative is on that side, so I do have this right. Positive and negative. Alright, and now that capacitor is in place, so now we can move on to this one. Actually, I'll probably do this one so I can uh, get it lined up with the uh, first one I did there. All right, so as you can see, we are now completely done. So you can see I've gotten all the capacitors on here. Uh, you can see I did put the correct capacitor uh, right in this area. So that's good. And uh, we've got these three on down here. So now all that's left to do is to put this display assembly back into the machine, turn it on, and see if it actually works. So I'm gonna go ahead and reassemble it, and uh, then I'll go ahead and resume the video. All right, so as you can see, I've gotten the machine mostly reassembled. Uh, I've gotten the display plugged in and the uh, little uh, inverter board over here is connected. So now I'm gonna go ahead and turn the machine on and we will see if the display actually works. So here we go. Oh, and the display is on. 
and it is working. Look at that. Let's go ahead and let it boot up here. It looks absolutely perfect. And it is indeed running Windows 3.1. Let's go ahead and adjust the contrast here. Contrast control works. It gets dark, it gets light, just like it's supposed to. And uh, Windows is now loading up here. Not sure what File Companions is, but... Oh, interesting. It has like some sort of resource monitor down here. Never seen that before. Oh, that is definitely quite interesting. But, as you can see, the uh, machine is working perfectly fine. Uh, the display looks perfect. And, uh, yeah, it's absolutely uh, working just like it's supposed to. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video here completely reassemble the display and then we'll go ahead and uh, take a closer look at the machine and uh, see what it looks like. So I'll go ahead and reassemble it and resume the video when I'm done. Alright, well unfortunately it turned out that the display still uh, had a small issue uh, even after recapping uh, the display board as you can see right here. Um, so basically if you take, if you notice closely in the uh, previous clip on this video, uh, the display contrast was slowly starting to get darker as I had the display on. Now I didn't really notice that while I was making the video uh, because I was adjusting the contrast control. However, um, after a while the display just got completely dark uh, and it became unusable once again. So I've gone ahead and removed the inverter board as you can see here and uh, this is what I believe is what's causing the problem. Now of course this board has those same type of capacitors like the display originally had um, and it also has a couple can electrolytics as you can see uh, right there and right there. So I've gone ahead and gotten new capacitors for this board as well. Um, so now I'm just going to go ahead and put my camera back in the tripod and uh, we're going to solder new capacitors on this board and uh, once I do that we will hook it back up and then test it once again uh, to see if it exhibits the same problem. So, I'm going to go ahead and put my camera on the tripod and resume the video. Alright, so as you can see, I've now gotten my uh, camera on the tripod here. Uh, I've got the board ready to begin soldering. And uh, that's exactly what we're going to do now. So, since all of these capacitors almost are different values, I think there's only like two that are the same. Actually, there might not even be two. Yeah, there's two that are the same. There's this one and this one. Uh, but since most of them are different values, I'm just going to go ahead and... Uh, at least for these three, I'm just going to take each one off and then solder the, the capacitors that need to go there uh, back on so I don't, you know, mix them up. Although, they aren't, they shouldn't be too hard to, uh, to keep straight. Um, so yeah, the first thing of course I'm going to do is I'm going to get uh, these surface mount capacitors off. Um, so I'm not sure if I can, I don't think I can take this off. It would make it a lot easier, but... Yeah, I don't think I can get it off. So I'm just going to have to be really careful and make sure I don't, you know, burn these things uh, with the soldering iron. So i uh, probably go ahead and turn it around this way. Um, and then the first thing we're going to do, of course, is apply some flux to the, uh, the area where the capacitor is. Do that. I'll just do all three of these at once. All right, now that I got some uh, flux on there, um, go ahead and apply a small bit of leaded, of uh, fresh leaded solder onto there. And uh, that to desolder, just like so. All 
right, that one came off. So that was one of the 4.7 microfarad 10 volt capacitors. Um, so now, of course, I'm going to do the same thing with this one. There we go, got that one off. And then we'll take the one microfarad 50 volt capacitor off. Get some fresh solder on there. Alright, so now that we got those off, um, we can go ahead and uh, clean up these pads a little bit to prepare for the new capacitors. Um, so go ahead and just... Uh Alright, that looks pretty good. Um, then we'll take some solder wick. Then we'll just take some um, rubbing alcohol and clean up all of that disgusting flux and uh, stuff that came off. Alright, that looks pretty good. Um, so now we'll go ahead and get the new capacitors for these uh, out of here and solder them on. So um, two of them were the Let's see, 4.7 microfarad 10 volt. Get those out here. Here are the capacitors. I got four of them just in case. Um, let's get these out here. Alright, so here's one capacitor out, and then of course we have to uh, make sure the polarity is correct, so the positive uh, goes on that side, just like that. Um, and then what I do is I just take my uh, tweezers here and bend the leads like they're supposed to be. Sort of down, and then back up just like that. And then uh, once I cut those off, it should fit right down on the board. Just like that, I actually might need to uh, bend the leads down a little bit more. Alright, and that should do it.
Yeah, just like that. Perfect. All right, so that capacitor soldered on. Um, so now, of course, we will go ahead and solder this one on as well. And this one is also a 4.7 microfarad 10 volt capacitor. Alright, good, now that one's on. And now we'll go ahead and do the larger capacitor, which is, let's see, it was a one microfarad 50 volt capacitor. Alright, so here is the new capacitor right here. Alright, so those three capacitors on, uh, so now all that's left to do are these two electrolytics right here, um, and then we should be good. So we'll start with this one, which is 22 microfarad 35 volts, um, so I'll go ahead and grab that capacitor. Here we go, 22 microfarad 35 volt. So I'm not sure why the uh, the leads on this are so small, but hopefully that won't be too big of a problem here. Um, yeah, so now this one's going to be a little bit of a challenge to desolder just because of how, uh, because it's a through hole component. First thing to do is get this glue off of it here. There we go. Um, and then we can just go to uh, the back of the board right here and use some solder wick to get uh, that solder off of them right there. So, go ahead and do that. Start with some flux. And then I'll add a little bit of solder to it. There we go. All right, that took all the solder off right there, so that cap should just come right out. And there we go. So now, of course, we'll just go ahead and stick the new capacitor in there. Now, these short leads kind of make this annoying. Okay, there, I straightened them out as much as I could there. Then we'll go ahead and stick the leads in.
just like that. So yeah, those leads were just about the right size there. And there we go. Now that capacitor is soldered in. Looks good. And now we'll just do this little small one right here. And uh, after that, we will be done. So let me go ahead and get that glue off again. There we go, came right out. Um, so this one is the 1.5 microfarad, 25 volt capacitor. So I got another one of them right here. As you can see, this one's quite a bit smaller than the original one was, um, so it should fit in just fine. Of course, make sure the polarity is correct here. it in just like this and there we go Perfect. All right, so now I'll just connect, uh, cut these excess leads off here. Same with this one since they were a little bit long. Those are fine. All right, and then of course the last thing we'll do is clean up that little bit of flux. And that looks pretty good. So yeah, so there's the new capacitors all installed. And uh, now we'll go ahead and just reassemble the system, turn it on, and see if it actually works now. So I'm going to go ahead and put it back together, uh, and then I'll go ahead and resume the video. All right, so as you can see, I have the machine uh, mostly assembled here, uh, enough to test it. Um, so now we'll go ahead and turn on the system and see if the LCD works. And it looks like it's working perfectly now. Um, so let's just wait and leave it on a while and see if the, uh, the contrast gets worse or changes. So we'll go ahead and let it boot up here. And so far it looks perfect. Yeah, see, now the contrast isn't changing like it was uh, in the previous clip. So let's see if I adjust the contrast here. That's the brightness. So it was like this before. This is how it was when it wasn't working properly. 
and now it goes all the way up till it's white and yeah that is actually looking perfect perfectly fine so I guess now what I'll go ahead and do is I'll go ahead and reassemble the display um, then we'll hook up uh, well, well you know we'll get the bezel on and make it look normal um, and then once we do that we'll go ahead and test it one more time and see if the display still looks normal so, I'm going to go ahead and get it reassembled and resume the video once that's done. Alright, so as you can see, I have gotten the display assembly completely reassembled and it is still working perfectly fine. Uh, as you can see here, I've also hooked the mouse up to it. And this is quite an interesting mouse. It actually uh, is a serial mouse, but it connects to the machine uh, using a serial to PS2 adapter. Um, so yeah, it works just fine. Um, as you can see, you know, it moves around the screen like you would expect. So I guess we can go ahead and take a little look at the machine here. Let's see. You can see it is quite slow. This is, of course, a 386-based machine. Let me open the file manager here. I really have no idea what's on this machine, but I do know uh, it has an 80 megabyte hard disk installed and it is a 386 base machine and I believe it has uh, 6 megabytes of system memory. So yeah, as you can see the display is now working perfectly fine and the machine itself is also working perfectly fine. So that has been the repair of the LCD display assembly on this Toshiba 22, T2200SX uh, laptop computer. Hope you enjoyed this video.